talk a little bit about biogeochemical cycles. And the term biogeochemical sounds very fancy, but really these are just cycles that involve different molecules uh, that are essential for life and how they circulate through an ecosystem and and really how they circulate through the entire uh, uh through an entire biosphere and the molecules uh, that we care about and molecules they could consist of one element or multiple elements they are things like well water molecules h2o oxygen and hydrogen make up a lot of living a lot of living creatures a lot of biomass uh, and and water is just an essential element that is involved in life as we know it we're also going to be talking about carbon and carbon takes on many forms when we think about biogeochemical cycles there's carbon dioxide in the air there's a lot of carbon in organic molecules that form up uh, most of the mass of life as we know it and then there's actors that maybe don't get as much attention there are things like nitrogen and of course you have characters like characters like phosphorus and you might say okay i get that most organic molecules are made up of a bunch of carbons and hydrogens and every now and then oxygens but what about nitrogens and what about phosphorus and remember your dna deoxy ribonucleic acid we're talking about nitrogenous bases your adenines and guanines and all of these things that we talk about in dna they involve nitrogen and there's other biomolecules amino acids proteins uh, amino acids which make up proteins that involve nitrogen phosphorus ATP the 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 adenosine triphosphate it's essential it's a in, in that in that core biomolecule it's also in the backbone of DNA so these are all essential elements for life and the key thing is is that they all get recycled through biogeochemical cycles so they are all recycled. We talked about how an ecosystem energy flows. It might start with light energy from the sun and then over time as it's transferred from one form to another, as it flows from one form to another, it gets dissipated as heat. But the matter, the elements, the molecules here, this is recycled. It was originally formed. I mean, there's a few uh, meteorites that hit every now and then. But the most part, most of the matter around us uh, was here at the dawn of when, when the Earth was first formed. It was first created in the in, in the inside due to fusion reactions of stars billions and billions and billions of years ago. So all of life, everything that we've seen so so far in the history of Earth, for the most part, is just the same elements and the same molecules that have been recycled over and over and over again. And so when we think about biogeochemical cycles we will think about things like if we're talking about H2O we're going to think about the water cycle water cycle and we have a whole video on that but in just you know the short version of it is you could have uh, water actually stored in multiple different ways some of it can evaporate as water vapor eventually it condenses in the form of clouds and then it can rain back down and along the way you can have animals uh, get access especially to the fresh water uh, and make that part of the, the actual living organisms you actually also have living organisms that view the water as as part of their ecosystem but we go into some depth in another video you'll also hear people talk about if we're talking about carbon the carbon cycle the carbon cycle and just as a very high level overview of the carbon cycle so let's say that's the ground let's say that this is a plant right over here it's a primary producer an autotroph we talk about that in our ecosystem video so let me draw a leaf here this is a plant that is growing what it's doing while it takes light energy so it gets light energy from the sun So that's the light energy right over there and it uses that light energy to fix carbon. The carbon that is making up this plant, it's just not emerging out of nowhere, it's being recycled. It's being recycled from carbon molecules that are in the air. So the carbon molecules in the air, they're going to be or the carbon in the air, it's going to be in molecular form in terms it's going to be carbon dioxide. So that over there is CO2. And so the plant uses that light energy 
and that gaseous, that CO2 gas, and it's able to fix the carbon to construct it. So it looks like that plant is just growing. Uh, it's not clear where all that mass is coming from, but it literally is coming from the air. And it might be able to get, it might get a few of the nutrients, especially things like nitrogen and phosphorus, from the ground. And that's where we could go into the whole nitrogen and phosphorus cycles. But then once these plants fix all of this carbon, some of it, it gets stored in the biomass. Sometimes the plant dies. And then it gets buried, and then with enough pressure, it can turn into uh, hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons, when you fuel your car, it's really, uh, it's, it's really energy stored by dead plants a long, long time ago that got buried and put into that form. But it was essentially plants through photosynthesis that first stored that energy. But then, of course, and we've talked about this, you can have animals that eat those plants. So let me draw an animal that is eating it. So that looks like an animal. Well, that one looks like something that likes to eat more than just plants. So this is. We draw it like it's like an alligator chicken looking thing. Well, that's close enough. Well, you get the idea. When it eats that plant, it's using some of that carbon that was fixed originally by that plant for its own biomass, but it'll also, as it, as it metabolizes the, some of it, as it, it, it will use that, the, the bond, the energy stored in those chemical bonds uh, to, to live and grow and, and move about. And as it does that, it will, it will exhale the CO2 so that the CO2 goes back into the environment. And this is a huge oversimplification of the carbon cycle, but this is the general idea. And eventually this thing might die or might get eaten by other, other consumers. And then you have the decomposers down here who could further make use of those chemical bonds that the, that the primary producer first created using that light energy. Let me decom. Decomposers right over here. And they might also, as they consume that, release more CO2, which will eventually then get fixed again by a primary producer. And there's similar cycles for nitrogen and phosphorus, these often involving bacteria to fix the nitrogen and the phosphorus from the air to make it available as nutrients in the soil for some of the primary producers in, say, the carbon cycle. And nitrogen doesn't get a lot of attention, but this is actually the most common gas in our atmosphere. So it's all around you right now, even while we're breathing, we are breathing a lot of nitrogen, although it doesn't play as strong of a role as, say, oxygen and the, uh, the oxygen in the air is going to be molecular oxygen. So I could also write O2 right over here. Or as we breathe out carbon dioxide. So I could write C, C, O2, C, O2 right over there. But hopefully this gives you a sense of how matter is recycled. As energy is flowing through ecosystems, including the largest ecosystem on our Earth, which is Earth as a biosphere. You have matter being constantly recycled. And the, the, the cycle of that matter we call biogeochemical cycles. I think I just said the word cycle a lot.